Hey, it's some old guy quoting again today. Hey, look what I got from this uh, nice uh, lady on uh, Craigslist. It's a uh, big fancy treadmill. Yeah, so we'll speed her up here a little bit. There, that's more comfortable. Yeah, this is what I really should be doing with my time, is I should be getting some exercise. But, you know, on this channel, that's not what we do. On this channel, we take things apart and look inside. I know there's some parts in here I want to use for a project, so let's see what we can find. So this machine is a brand uh, Vision Quest, no, Vision Fitness, my apologies. Pretty snazzy, they made these uh, around 1998 to the early 2000s. Its brand or uh, model number is the T8100. It's got uh, some programmability features here. It's also got a button on the side down here, we probably can't see it in the dark. That raises and lowers the incline, so that's a bonus. And yeah, it was doggone heavy. And thank goodness the, uh, the lady had her uh, grandson there to, to help me carry it out and get it into the back of my little Prius out there. Almost got the hatch closed, not quite, but good enough. So I suspect the motor will be down in here someplace in the electronics, but I'm really not sure. I haven't taken one of these apart before. So let's go ahead and get started. Because I gotta store this in the garage and, and Barb's gotta park in the garage, uh, I'd like to you know get it out of here as quickly as possible. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the uh, top off this, the control board, and see what we can find. <laughs> Well, look at all the dust in there. So this motor here is the thing that apparently through this uh, screwdriver uh, pushes back on that set of wheels back there and controls the inclination. And then this guy here, of course, is the big motor with a big wheel and a belt on it over here. So I'll work on getting that out here in a minute. This has got uh, and have a two board configuration here and uh, we'll have to take a look at them to figure out what we're doing. Uh. Mm. Yeah, there's three there so that might be the control side that might be the only board we need there we'll see. All right, well, I didn't bother you guys with the rest of the disassembly here. Ended up with a big metal frame and a, 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 a smaller metal frame and actually a couple of the side things, you know, the places to hold on to, a couple of panels there. Took those off to the metal recycler this morning. 
Here's some of the remnants. We've got a very nice, some sort of a fiber board. This is the belt, what the belt runs over and you actually walk on. It's uh, got a slick surface on it. And then down behind the corner here, we've got the um, front panel display, which we're gonna take apart further. And down here, I've got the two uh, rollers that the uh, the walking belt ran on. Here's the pulley attached to the one side. I'm not sure how to get that off. I haven't looked that close. The shaft spins very nicely on this one too. It spins very nicely. This piece here, oh, well, here's the belt, of course. It's a grooved belt. And this thing here, I can get it out, is the assembly with the uh, linear action motor that uh, adjusted the, uh, the height the elevation of the, of the treadmill. We're just going to put those down there for the time being. We of course also ended up with a uh, regular old AC power cord and uh, a big bag of screws and nuts and other hardware and uh, some connectors um, off of the stuff that was going up through the handles to uh, to the control board and yeah, nice hole. Oh, there's even some big dampening uh, pads here too, with a screw coming out of the one end and uh, room for a screw to go in the other end, so rubberized. Pretty good haul, I'd say. I'm happy with it. Um, let's uh, follow up with the rest of the stuff downstairs. But hey, let's not forget about the nice control panel here. Let's see what's inside of that. <clears throat> well, first off the top, we have the uh, membrane switches. And the clear displays for the um, LED displays, or yeah, the uh, LED numeric displays. And here's a little tiny reed switch there for uh, the safety uh, connector thing, that in case you fall off, it pulls it off and it stops. So underneath there was attached this. And uh, let me flip her around here. This is probably a processor. It's got a date of, uh, I think I saw 1998 on here someplace. Yeah, in fact, uh, the physical uh, traces are Digital Concepts of Missouri, Inc., copyright 1996, FC 100, Revision, revision Zero. Hoo-hoo! And there's some diode locations over here that are unpopulated. Um, I'm sure this was designed to handle uh, more switches. There weren't that many switches. There wasn't that many switches on this guy here. And that's probably, uh, you know... Uh, uh, diodes for for some matrix scanning of those switches and what else do we have here's probably the firmware in this little guy it looks like uh, I wonder if it was set up for a couple of different uh, styles of uh, ROM perhaps a longer ROM here a smaller one here if it didn't have uh, need that much code space and and maybe a EE prom or a UV pro erasable prom uh, ROM here uh, you know, old days for development. Perhaps that was that was what went in there. We got some discrete transistors if you were looking for a place to grab some of those. And on the back, a couple of pieces. Here's the 5 volt regulator that displayed power to this board, I assume. And a beeper. Beep. Who cares? <clears throat> but this case is kind of cool. If you open up the back of it here, it's uh, got this nice plate that goes all the way across. Yeah, you could uh, maybe cut this. Uh, maybe you could cut this area out a little bit larger and put a board back there and put some switches and dials and who knows what. That'd be kind of cool. But the thing we all came here for was was that guy, the motor. And this is a Leeson. I don't know if that's a good one or not. Um, 4,000 RPMs, 90 volts, 20 amps, uh, 2 horsepower supposedly. Um, continuous duty, that's nice to see. 
Now this one has a uh, positive, a negative, and a, uh, and a ground. So the green one's the ground, of course. There uh, is no temperature sensor in the back of this unit. Some units come with a device in there that has a set of blue wires that are a uh, uh, overheat switch. We don't have that on here. Of course, this has this huge weight on the front here, which is nice in some ways. Smooth out, uh, you know, the mass will smooth out everything. Um, if you look in the tail end here, you don't see too much going on right there. It's kind of boring, but if we look, and we should look, in here, it needs to be cleaned out a bit. We should look in here and see what state the brushes are in. Need to, need to vacuum this guy out. So let's see, how does this look? That connects there, that connects there. Looks like there's a little clip here. Right here, I wonder how that pops out. Ooh, maybe just like that. Or maybe not. go <laughs> holy buckets look at this massive brush that's a huge massive white brush looking down in there there is some wear on the commutator but I'm not gonna worry too much about it that is one heck of a brush I hook into something down there the question is how do we get those guys to There we go. It's in. I push down and and forward, and then you do it again. It pops up. So if we pull back. There. If we pull back this way. It locks in. Interesting. Alrighty. Yep. That's about the same state. I think that's that's decent. Should give me some life before I have to replace it. Got a little mounting bracket on the bottom here with a tensioner system uh, that was in the. Uh, Treadmill, of course. Oh, that's heavy. I think it's all about that weight on the front there. And this, of course, is threaded uh, or uh, set up on the uh, front for that uh, short serpent, short serp serpentine belt that came off the system. Yikes! This is this is heavy and it's getting away on me. So flip it over like that. All right, there. So two boards came out of that system. Uh, I've done some looking around on YouTube and people talk about old style controllers and new style controllers and I imagine this is definitely an old style but I couldn't quite find one that looked like it. Um, so maybe this is something different from that uh, brand there. They made, maybe, maybe they made their own thing. This control board here has uh, a little step down transformer for one thing, uh, power came in on these little jumpers back here, which uh, just jumper over to another set of wires that would power the next board. So let's take that stuff off for a second. So the 110 volt AC, according to the label on the board here, uh, came in on the red wires and nine volt AC came out on the black wires. There was a switch on the side that can control whether this uh, one relay or the other relay kicked in to drive the um, inclination motor up or down. That's that threaded uh, uh, linear linear motor that we got off the bottom of the uh, treadmill. So let's take a close look at this board, um, the other board. This is the actual controller board for the uh, for the uh, DC motor. Uh, this guy over here so that uh, it can control the speed on there. And this uh, board, you know, I've been looking on the internet and uh, YouTube and it doesn't quite match some of the other borders, boards that I've been seeing on there. But you know, perhaps this place did their own thing. It's uh, Digital Concepts of Missouri, copyright 1986, BK-375FK, Rev Zero. Very nice. The good thing about this board though, are these connectors right over here and let's see if we can get a really close look at those. So right down here 
we have this connector and uh, this connector is actually wired to these three pins which is uh, very promising because we have a low, a high, and a W in between. So it indicates a spot to put a uh, variable resistor with a uh, 0 volts, 12 volts, and the wiper that goes in between. So I've still got the original wiring harness that was uh, I took out of the uh, treadmill. It's a good thing to hold on to and the power cord um, which is currently unplugged. There we go. <laughs> so it's got this nice little connector on the back. Takes a standard uh, you know, cable. I've got the grounds wired together with the motor but it really doesn't matter right now as long as they don't short out against anything. Here. So. Whoa! Well, that's not a good sign, is it? So the red wire, uh, which goes to the fuse and then to the switch, and this black wire, which I assume is, uh, you know, you think it would be the neutral or the hot, but it might be the neutral here. It splits off in two different places from the plug. One going up here to the switch, and you say, well, why is the hot and the, and the uh, common going neutral going to the same switch is because we need something to drive this light when the power turns on. So that's probably what this wire is doing. Then we have these two connectors coming off of there besides the ground. A red and a black. And there happen to be two connectors on the board here for a C. Let's go ahead and take a look at the connectors real quick if this will focus. We have AC1, AC2, I don't know that it really matters which way you connect it up. Um, then there's a motor minus and a motor plus. Let's go ahead and get her wired up here. So the red will go on the motor plus. Unless of course you're running the motor in reverse, which you could just swap these around. Or put a switch in to flip it back and forth. And the motor minus. And then the ACs. AC1 and AC2 and we'll make sure that that ground is out of the way so nothing bad happens like that. All right. Let's make sure that guy's spinning. And go ahead and plug this plug in and we'll see what happens. Oh, but before we do anything, because it won't do anything without a control voltage. So I've got this little 1K pot wired up so that if you crank it counterclockwise, it was gonna to go to the low side of this connector down here. Just like that. And remember, this uh, little connector is wired right up to those three, three uh, uh, connectors down here, the low, the wiper, and the high. So the red one's the wiper, and the high is the uh, white, actually. So I'll just let that sit there for a minute. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. See if I can electrocute myself. Now, you know, I'm no electrician or expert in, in house wiring or high voltage or anything. So, uh, you know, do this at your own risk. Now that we got the plug plugged in and the switch turned on, we have uh, these two LEDs over here. It says AC and motor. Um, I assume the uh, motor means just that the DC is available uh, because the motor certainly isn't on right now. I have this thing cranked all the way counterclockwise. But if we crank her up a little bit, let's see if we get that motor will start. There it goes. There's always a start delay. And the slowest I can get it to go still leaves a bit of play in the pot. Um, I'll wait for it to slow down here and see if it's still running. Oh, it's still running. And I don't have this knob on very well. Let's start over. I'll crank her all the way down. I'll put the knob on right. All right, so the knob's all the way down. And the motor stopped. We'll crank it up just a little bit here. See if anything happens. There's a startup delay. So it's like nothing's happening yet, so we'll crank her up a little more. There it goes, it's taken off. So you can see there's uh, maybe about, uh, oh, I don't know, a, a fourth or a fifth of the turn here uh, on the pot that uh, really doesn't do anything. We'll address that problem here in a minute. 
On the other end of things, if you crank it all the way up, there's a safety circuit in there that apparently gets up to a certain voltage and the system or the board thinks it's on uh, runaway, perhaps the ground lead is broken. And uh, so it takes a second and then it shuts it down. Let me demonstrate that for a second. A little noisy here, all the way up. I'm gonna leave it alone, it'll turn off in just a second. So there's a limit on the high end too, and that would certainly be inconvenient if you go to crank the whole thing up to high speed and it hits the limit and it turns off. That's, that's a drag. So let's take a look at the next thing I did here. I'll pull this guy off. That's a, that's a good reliable pot there. I've got one that's kind of unreliable over here. So we think about it, we want to move the sweet spot of, this, of the uh, voltage into the variable resistor. We want to cut off the low end a little bit, and we want to cut off the high end a little bit so that it doesn't go into that shutdown mode. So I monkeyed around with some resistors here, and this is a 1K pot, so you'd have to uh, uh, change them proportionately if you have like a 10K pot, and probably have to fiddle with the values a little bit. So what I've got is two two 100 ohm resistors in series on the top end to eliminate that um, shutdown voltage. So the shutdown voltage is off here in the resistor someplace and not in the pot. So I can crank the pot all the way up and it won't shut down. And then down on the bottom end I uh, played around for a little bit and I have 100 ohm resistor and a 47 ohm resistor, about 150 ohms all together so that uh, we could go down to the end here and the motor would turn off. I want that motor to turn off and I'm all the way down. But it is sensitive. We can just turn it up a little bit and get it started. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that. Make sure I got the low end of the pot to the low end of the circuit here. Yep, perfect. So now I should be able to turn this up just a little bit and have it turn. Give it a second. Well, there's a little leeway there, obviously. There we go. There it's going. So I just didn't wait long enough. And we should be able to get that guy to slow down quite a bit here. There we go. Oh, no, they're stopped. There. It's a little bit of tweaking, and that's going pretty slow, you know? You can see there as the tag goes by. And also, we've saved uh, the high end here so that if you want to crank it, you can crank it without hitting that uh, emergency stop. So if you have a pot, as long as it's a linear pot, you know, a 1K, a 10K, maybe even a 100K would be enough. You don't want anything smaller, which there probably isn't anyway, because you start having too much current running from one end to the other here. But as you can see, by using these resistors, we spread out the sweet spot in the pot here so that it's uh, usable all the way across the range. So there you have it. As long as you've got, uh, you know, the low, the wiper, and the high uh, connection someplace on the board that you find in your treadmill, I'm thinking you could probably put a pot on it and, uh, and get that to work. So, score. Variable speed for whatever you want to, whatever you want to do. Startup delay uh, is a little bit of annoying. Uh, I'm just not sure what to do about that. It'll just work. But this is the flaky pot here. It's got like a bad connection on the one end. There we go. I'm gonna have to change pots out. Cheap, cheap pots off of Amazon. So pretty neat. Uh, good deal here. Of uh, you know, watch my future videos to see what we're gonna do with this guy. I've already got part of it built out there in the garage, and we'll be popping it on there. So thanks for watching. Have a good one.
But wait, don't go yet. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you can see future episodes from this channel. And if you'd like to help out and support this channel, uh, go to patreon.com slash coding for as little as a dollar a month. We really appreciate it. Thanks. See you soon.